you guys keep up with my channel at all, you'll remember this machine, and you'll remember that I just rebuilt this mower deck. Here we are back. <laughs> so I mowed maybe 20 hours with this machine this summer, and now it's end of August. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough time to fix this and get it back mowing before the end of this year, so I'm hopeful. But uh, let me show you what happened. Here we are guys, this summer was going really, really good with this machine. And I just had some catastrophic damage. I found this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that looks to be a roll pin. And we've also found a pulley that's wiped out and a tensioner pulley that's wiped out. So I think this is gonna have to come back to the shop and some serious fixing is gonna to have to take place. Oh, this sucks. So this will probably pretty much be the end of the summer for this machine. It's August, almost end of August now, so another year, another big project. So I trailered this machine back here to the shop, and now it's time to start disassembling. I'm going to take these bolts off, take this whole, I guess you'd call this a head assembly, take that whole thing up, and then I'm going to be able to get to the gear underneath. All right, we can now see a little bit more. Looks like that tensioner is loose. So anyway, I've got to take off these bolts and the bolts here. And then this whole piece looks like it'll just lift right off. Just as I feared, this does not look good. The shaft is quite scratched up. The pulley here. <laughs> Looks like it sheared the keyway. Uh, maybe savable. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. So, here's this pulley that we saw earlier. Quite a bit of play, but most of the damage happened right here. I don't know how well that keyway shows up, but uh, the keyway, the key that was in the keyway, I don't know what happened, but this thing loosened up somehow and started moving around. I got this upside down, but you guys get the idea. This thing loosened up and started moving around, and then the spring pin that was pressed in here was all loose on the pulley so this thing probably over the years had just been moving a little bit so what I'm gonna do I can't find one of these pulleys anywhere and this shaft is hardened but it, you can it's still a little irritated from that pulley being spun on there I'm gonna take this in my lathe and cut this out I think circular obviously down to the keyway I'll leave a little shoulder and I'm gonna make a bushing you know similar to this and press in there and then I'll have to figure out how to cut the rest of that keyway. I think I'm going to use this. This is a PTO shaft from one of my old videos. I'm going to cut that material and make a bushing out of this if it's not hardened. I don't think it is but I'm going to try making a bushing out of that just because I think it would be kind of cool using some of the old parts that I had to spend a lot of money to replace. Um, this pulley through John Deere was like $380. Um, this whole machine is not worth that kind of money. I mean, I do have to draw the line somewhere. Um, this thing is an early one. This gearbox is an early gearbox with a pin, which is basically a quarter inch pin, spring pin. Um, the later ones were tapered, which was a better deal, so this way this wouldn't it wouldn't spin on this shaft. I don't know why they put a pin here. Like, it doesn't need a shear. That's what the belt is for. The belt is designed to let this thing slip if it needs to. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do to fix this.
pretty close. All right, so I've got my boring bar set up. We're just gonna try to true this up first. And then, I guess, see what it looks like. See how even, if this is gonna be doable. So let's get started. Hoping you guys can see this, because it's really hard to get a GoPro where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna start, let's see if I can get a touch off. See what that looks like. It's doing something, I hear it. Okay, so that's that's truing it up a little bit. Let's see if we can make a little pass. I'm just gonna manually feed this at first. Just in case anything crazy happens. This is definitely a cast material. So that's doing a decent job cleaning that up. I'm just gonna feed this all the way and then I'll start taking some material out. Okay, I got most of the way through. And what I'm gonna do, I don't know if you can see this or not, because this camera really is difficult to get in these weird spots. I don't wanna take this out of the chuck because then I gotta recenter it and re-zero it. But I'm leaving about uh, 20 thousandths of a lip on the back side because that was a true dimension. And that way, whenever I can, you know, I get this done, I can press that bushing right up and it'll stop. And it'll act as, you know, a mechanical stop for that. I don't know, I think it's a good idea. Plus that's the true dimension it needs to be. So I'm gonna give it a try. So I'm gonna keep hogging material out of this. All right, so I'm getting close to be at the max dimension to still use that piece of metal that was a part of the PTO shaft. Um, but as you can see, I still have keyway to clean up and I'd like to get below that so that I could machine a new keyway in the sleeve. So I've taken down probably about 60 thousandths overall and I still need to keep going. So anyways, I may just have to use a bigger piece of metal to make that sleeve. No big deal. Okay, so you can see there really well the old, the bottom of the old keyway and also to the right the damage of where the keyway was twisted. And that is pretty darn close to being true. Um, so I'm gonna just keep on going, keep on trucking. I'm gonna take probably another, probably another 60 thousandths. I just gotta keep an eye on the wall thickness so I don't wanna go too much and then have it whenever I press the new one and have it split. So I just gotta be real careful. So when I do these passes, guys, because this is a really light cast material, I'm only taking about 10 to 11 thousandths per pass. I know I could go more. I don't wanna hurt anything. So what I do, when I start this, I clear my x-axis. That way, whenever I get to the end and I have to pull in, draw the carriage back, I can go right back to my zero. And also, my y-axis is zeroed, so that whenever I get to the bottom depth of 96 thousandths, I know when to stop. So, whenever I'll show you guys in real time, get a reset. Let's just try 12. Whenever I do the auto feed,
my hand. That 12 thousandths pass was enough to take out most of that keyway. As you can see here, there's just a little bit of damage there left. However, I'm going to keep going past that until I feel like it's a safe spot to stop. We'll go from there. That's about as far as I dare go. The wall thickness is starting to get kind of thin in through here. It's not going to hurt anything once you press in a new bushing. That's going to add substance. But I don't want to split this whenever I drive that new bushing in. So I have to just be kind of careful. I'm going to put a slight chamfer on here. And then I think I'll be done with the machining on the pulley. I'll have to then start with the bushing. This is the material I'm going to use. This is just two inch mild steel, cold rolled steel. I'm going to cut this off and this is going to be my bushing. Yes, this is big, but this will have enough material where I, if I mess up, I can make another one. Getting that booger off the end. That booger on the end will really mess you up when you start making a pass. Just starting to touch. Oh, let's advance about ten thousandths, eleven thousandths, and make an automated pass. all marked down anyway just so it's nice and clean even though I only need you know half an inch zero my indicator and you can still this you can see there's just a slight bit of rust there, but that's a good finish for leaving. I'm gonna now face this off, get it square, do a lot more machining work. Let's advance the carriage. Maybe another 10. I always lock the carriage down when I'm making a feed. See what that does. He's coming along. One bad thing about using old material is that you have to deal with this kind of stuff sometimes. You know, where someone cut this with a torch and they left it all boogery. But you know, I'll get that turned down pretty quick. No big deal. Got this piece faced. 
it's quite warm. I'm going to let it cool down. Um, but basically, I got all that damage cleaned off, and I got some nice metal underneath. So now I'm going to start turning that diameter down. All right, I got this thing turned down to within, I think, like 80 thousandths. So we're getting pretty close. Um, now I'm going to drill the center hole, or at least a center hole, and then get that somewhat close. I need to let this whole piece cool down because it is kind of warm before I do the finish dimension for the sleeve. I'm going to start with using a number five centering bit. Okay. I'm going to be using this 5 8 twist drill just because I kind of want to remove all the material quickly. And then once I get this in there, uh, maybe an inch, inch or so, inch and a half, I will use a boring bar to rough this diameter. I'm not going to turn the true diameter until I get it pressed into the pulley. I'm going to slow that down just a little bit. That's still a little too fast for my taste. Let's try 300. A little better. Okay. Let's get twisted drilling. So I've got down really close, and as you can see, I've got a step here that I was going to do a pass, and I was like, oh, you know what, I better check it. And I'm glad I did, because, as you can see, that one goes on, and it's almost loose. It is loose, actually. So then I made a second pass, 10 thousandths less, and it looks like it's just about to go on. So I'm going to do, I'm hoping, one final pass to this dimension, maybe a little proud, and then I'll just have to cut this off and then I can use that centerpiece. Cool. All right, so I've got this thing chamfered on the edge and I've got it face down. Now I can kind of feel that that's probably like a maybe a two to five thousandths no I lie that's probably like a two to three thousandths interference fit so that's gonna press on there um, this kind of stuff guys is pretty experimental there's no real rule book that tells you exactly what spec to make I mean it'll get you close but the problem is by the time you put um, the retainer in there or the Loctite that's going to take up a little bit of slop. Um, so you kind of have to just use your experience, use your judgment, and make it as close to your ability that you can. And that's kind of what separates, you know, separates the good from the bad machinists, if you will. And I'm not, I'm not a machinist by any means, nor do I claim to be. Um, I just know how to improvise and make stuff work by feel, not so much by looking in a book. And uh, it's got me this far, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, I'm just parting this piece now. Nice and slow. You can part a lot of stuff. 
plenty of oil. Okay, so I undershot the length of the hole just a little bit, so I had to use a boring bar to actually get in there and finish off the, the piece. But anyway, there it is. Okay, so now we can see. That's a. I think that's going to be a really good fit. It just feels like it's going to go relatively easy. Uh, and I think with a little bit of sleeve retainer or Loctite, I think that's going to be just a perfect fit. And I left this a little rough intentionally because I was hoping that that sleeve retainer would fill some of those gaps and they wouldn't just push against whenever I press that together. We'll see if it works. So I got this in the freezer just to see if that would make it fit just a little bit tighter, which, or a little bit looser, I should say. And that's basically ready just to drop right in. Um, I was thinking about using sleeve retainer on this, but I don't know if I'm going to or not. I don't really know what to do in this case. I'm just kind of playing this by ear. I think what I'm going to do is if I drive that in, I might drill a hole through it and then drive a key in or a round key just to kind of lock it in. Um, so I really don't know what to do in this case just because I don't want to risk splitting this. And I feel like the extra clearance I would need to drive this in there might make it just a little too tight with the bearing retainer but if I make this thinner I'm afraid that it will just be too loose so I don't know what to do in this case we'll just have to wing it all right so I've made the decision I'm going to while this is still somewhat cold I'm going to put a little bit of blue Loctite on there not the sleeve retainer now why am I doing this I don't know I just figured the sleeve retainer looked really thicker I don't know maybe it wasn't much thicker but I'm gonna try the blue Loctite just a little bit of it and that'll also help lubricate the fit now I've already gone ahead and clean all this cleaned all this with you know the appropriate cleaner prep all is what I use it's a wax and grease remover and I'm gonna be doing this by hand only I'm not gonna try I'm gonna try not to use a handle on this press I don't have an arbor press. An arbor press would be ideal for this application because with an arbor press, you can really feel how the thing is fitting. So we're having a little bit of feedback there, but it's going pretty easy. It's, you can hear it shifting. That's a good sign because that means that it's it's slipping as it goes. So that means it's not a super super tight. Boy, I think we got it. I think we got it. Oh, that is beautiful. I could not have done that again if I tried. I mean, I could, but it might take me quite a few times. Oh. I'm super happy about that and it doesn't seem like much guys, but I've got like five hours worth of work into making this bushing and I was just worried sick that I was gonna mess this up I'm just gonna give that an extra seat and again, I don't want to damage the surface Oh, I'm so happy that turned out. So I'm going to let this cool. I mean, it's not <laughs> cool. I'm going to let this expand to room temperature, and we'll check back on it. Um, I'm hoping it's fine. Check it out. No splits or anything. I am ecstatic right now. And like I said, I've got like five hours invested in boring the center of this pulley, making a new shim, and I still have more machining to do. Obviously, I've got to make this flush and bore 
the ID, which is going to be the new shaft seat, and also I got to figure out a keyway option as well. So I am just overjoyed that I got this far. So let's keep trucking. Got this thing back in the chuck. I'm now going to turn the inner diameter to match the diameter of the shaft, or slightly less, and I can fine-tune this to fit real nice and snug. As you can see, I've got a little shoulder in there. I've actually taken the shaft of this gearbox and I've put it in just to kind of get the fit perfect. So I've only really got one shot at this. If I go under, uh, we've defeated the whole purpose of making a shim because it was under before, but it'll be tighter. Anyways, uh, this I'm going to have to cut off. So I did the inner dimension right here before I make the whole pass because this way I can just, if I mess up, I can just take this down and start over because I'm going to have to face this all down to the pulley anyways. So sometimes you just got to use that material that you have to your advantage. So this is what I'm hoping will be the final pass. I'm only taking just a little over half a foul and I'm pretty much right there. So I'm hoping that this will be the final diameter bore for this pulley and I can start facing that material. We'll find out here in 2000s. I think that'll be it guys. As you can see in there, you can still, the black paint is still on the face of the pulley, of the inside of the pulley, just starting to touch. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's hard to get the camera in there. You kind of still see the shoulder where I made the bushing press into. So I've angled my tool post on the compound so that way I can get in here and I can uh, take that chamfer, or I can take that shoulder down. And I think what's happening is I'm getting a false dimension because this out here is free and the piece in the pulley is compressed just a little bit. Even though I'm running a boring bar through both pieces, I think it is giving me just a little bit of a false size. So I'm just going to turn this down and get a nicer, truer dimension. I'm just doing little bits at a time because now that I've set this sleeve in with Loctite, I don't want to heat that up too much because it could potentially do something I don't want to have done, which is, you know, having the thermal expansion and it could potentially ruin this thing. After all this work I've done, I'm just going to take it slow, let that cool down before I do any more. This is really starting to take shape. I'm quite happy with the way this turned out. It's basically just flush. You know, there's a little lip there, but that's not going to bother me one bit because that's going to be up underneath. And I'd rather leave it a little long. So that way I can use most of the shaft or more of the shaft as if I shorten that up. And I'm talking the PTO shaft. So that'll sit up here further. And if I cut it down a little more. So anyway, I'm just going to do one final test fit and hopefully this one will be ready to make the keyway and I'll be done with the lathe for a while. Now I'm taking this out and I'm hoping I don't have to put it back in because to get this thing zeroed again and true to bore say more if I have to is going to be really difficult. So there's the money shot right there as you can see. That's just about perfect. So now I've just got to figure out how to grind this keyway. 
um, and also I've got to finish drilling through the hole through the sleeve but I'm very happy with that guys like and again I got a lot of time invested in this thing if I had to pay a machine shop to do this you know, I'm sure they could do it quicker than what I'm doing but uh, this is kind of the whole fun of these builds is that you get to use tools and push your limits to what you can do so let me show you how this fits okay so here is the gearbox obviously and this is going to be a pretty tight fit and I've made it that way intentionally so that I can press this on it probably won't even take a strike of a hammer as you can see there it'll go down um, and what's going to have to happen is if I ever take this off again I'm going to have to use a pulley puller um, I'm hoping I'll have to take this off again that's the whole idea behind this um, so anyway it's it'll fit on there the shaft is just a little out of true as you can see but that's fine and it's out of true because the keyway that was in there had twisted so I, if I do a little bit more grinding there it'll probably the pulley will probably go right down on I just want to have as much material there as I can so I don't want to go too crazy pulling stuff off or grinding stuff off I should say it's super super nice I'm happy with that I'm just using these real fine brushes here I don't want to really remove a lot of material I'm just trying to get the high spot And again, this is hardened. This is a really hard piece of material. And where that keyway basically sheared, it kind of hurt the inside of this keyway a little bit. So I'm gonna have to make a little bit of adjustment in there. I did get a John Deere keyway, only because they were relatively cheap for what they were. Probably the cheapest thing you could buy from John Deere is a keyway. So as you can see, it doesn't really fit. I'm gonna have to machine that out just a little bit so that that burr that's on there see it fits that way so there's a burr in there i have to grind out so i think i've made the decision to abandon the keyway i was really kind of gung-ho about starting the process but i found out my files won't fit in there and i can't really find a brooch anywhere a quarter inch brooch um and also i got thinking if i do cut the keyway in there it's going to put a pretty big notch in this sleeve and it could potentially weaken that so what I've done is I've just gone ahead and I've drilled out you know this quarter inch hole and I think if I just rely on a soft bolt as a shear bolt if you will I think that'll be all this thing needs because this is also I've machined this to where this is a it'll have to be pressed on the hub you know gently but I think it'll it'll be a pretty tight fit so I think that bolt may be all we need but I got to do some more thinking I did a bunch of work to this thing behind the scenes um, obviously what I ended up doing was I abandoned the keyway I determined that the keyway was not going to be a good solution what I ended up doing however was drilling and tapping a set screw hole so now what this thing will do I've got a nice little set screw here what this set screw will do is twofold. One, it will hold in that sleeve in the event of turning. And also it will lock on to the shaft to keep it from spinning. Because the keyway, you know, you've got to have something in there just to kind of a mechanical thing to hold that shaft on there. Obviously we've got a bolt as well. So now we've got a keyway that'll reach in. And also what I've done is I've gone ahead and made a bolt I didn't make the bolt, but I took and I had to dye about half an inch of material so that the shoulder, this flat part without threads on it, would fit in here really nice and act as a act as a shear pin. So I've also taken a file and made these surfaces flat so that the bolt will go in there and it will lock so I've only got to tighten one so it'll lock right here a flat of that will lock so I've only got to turn one side obviously um, anyways 
this was quite shattered up. As you can see how these holes are oblonged, I had to take and drill the inner sleeve to a true quarter inch so that it's really nice and tight. Um, so anyways, it may be a little tricky to line this up on the PTO shaft or of the gearbox. And that's just a little mark where the file scraped the paint off. So anyways, there it is guys. This is my solution. This is what I'm gonna do. This is gonna be just as good as any keyway was. Now, as you can see, what's gonna happen is, this goes on that far, just by hand, and it's a really snug, tight fit. So I can just take a dead blow hammer, you know, softly tap that on the seat, drive that bolt through. I think that's gonna be a really nice repair. Okay, guys, installation time. What I'm gonna do is just use a little bit of copper-based anti-seize, more or less for a lubricant than anything else. And also, if I do take this off down the road, it should not seize on. That's the whole intention anyways. And that also keeps the materials from galling together. So I've made some marks on that shaft to try to use this as a guide. Because now that, boy, that's a nice fit. Now that we don't have the keyway to guide the shaft on, it's going to be really difficult to line that all up perfect. Fast forwarded, I trimmed my center bolt and I tightened down my set bolt. And I used one of these eight point sockets because it's a, obviously a square head and I was able to tighten that down and get quite a bit of torque on that. That is a quarter by 20. So guys, this is all done. I'm ready to put this thing back on the machine. I am super happy with the way this turned out. I'd say that was a successful repair. I have got a lot of time in this, you know, but this was kind of a one-shot deal. I mean, if I messed up on this hub, uh, it would have been almost impossible to repair. So I still have a hub. I still have something that I can put back on the tractor and make it work. That's very secure. There's hardly any play. There's, well, there's no play. It was a pressed fit. Um, but I was able to successfully save this old pulley. And I put blue Loctite on both of these quarter-inch fasteners. Uh, I don't think that thing's going to loosen up. If it does, we've got bigger problems. But in the meantime, let's get this back on the machine and see if we can get mowing for the end of the, end of the season. When it comes to the mower deck itself where the, I don't know if you can see this or not, but this whole piece is loose. This is the piece that the, this is just an idler, bolted through the deck. And this is what the wheel sat on. And this whole contraption bolted through the deck. Um, so I'm gonna weld this both sides, grind it down smooth, and hopefully that'll be all that it requires. Uh, worst case scenario, I might just have to weld some gussets, weld this piece, and then weld some gussets to make it stronger. Because that's quite a bit of stress on just one little piece of deck like that. I don't know why they did that. Seems kind of weird. So I took that material, and I welded it, and I welded it up higher. It's kind of hard to see because it's been painted. But I basically made like a washer, and then I ground that washer flat. So that, that way this post will sit on there for the idler pulley. So if that thing gives me any more issues, what I'll have to do is, I don't know if I can show this or not. Okay, so there's this bolt here. And there's this standoff thing that basically just makes this tensioner sit up higher. Um, so if this gives me any more issues, I'm going to have to weld this solid and weld some gussets to the deck. 
so I don't have issues with this thing again. But for right now, I think that'll be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get this gearbox installed on the mower. And while I'm in here, I'm gonna get a new belt on this thing. Part number M120381. This is a double-sided V-belt, kind of a, an oddball. You know, not many pieces of equipment use these things. But uh, it's kind of cool. Anyway, this is the old one, quite wore out. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just grease all these fittings, then go ahead and put that gearbox back on. Got this mower deck all buttoned up. Threw me for a curve there because you actually have to take this plate off, or I should just put the belt on first, then put this plate on, because this this belt has to go over this pulley and around. Um, that was handy. If I didn't have this, it would have taken me a while to figure out how this belt went on. Um, anyways, it's a double-sided V belt. It's a pretty cool system. Um, honestly, I've never really had one of these double-sided V belts, so. See how that goes. Got this adjusted. Let's put this all back together and uh, let's give this thing a try.